We're going to start uh, with what's happening at Tottenham. Uh, we talked about Chelsea there, of course, going well in Europe, at the top of the Premier League as well. The last man to win the Premier League for Chelsea was, of course, Antonio Conte, who is now in at Tottenham, back in English football today, uh, taking over a Spurs side who are ninth in the table and ten points off the top. Um, Paul, Jamie Redknapp said yesterday on Sky Sports News when the news broke about Nuno that, that Spurs are, quote, a laughing stock on the pitch at the moment. Does the appointment of Conte mean that they are now going to be taken seriously again? I think it will take time. I don't, I, I don't, don't think this is a come in, change a manager, change, change a voice and it will change in one game. I, I'd be shocked. I think what I've seen over the last couple of the weeks, this team is in disarray. Uh, I think they're all over the place. I think, what is it, one and a half games or so without a shot on target? Well, that's not Tottenham, especially when you've got Harry Kane and Son in the team. I think this is going to take a lot of hard work. I think there's going to be a lot of players there thinking, oh, my God, this is going to be stop, start, wait there, you get there, <laughs> stop, you ask all the footballers here. <laughs> we, you just want to train. This is going to be stop, start, starting all over again. I, I, I think there's a lot of hard work. You, you say ten points off the top, you know, they're... they're they're five points off fourth. That's realistic. And I, I personally think, I think that's why this has been done. I think the form of Manchester United has made Tottenham change their manager as quick as what they have. And I, and I only say that because at the start of the season, the, the top four was blocked, in my opinion. It was, you know, the, the big four, and that was going to be the four. But the way Man United have been recently, you know, with Oli in charge... I think that that's an opportunity, top four, and I think they've looked at it and thought, we better make a change now because we could miss the boat here. And I, I think if Man United were flying along now, I, I don't think they would have made a change. I mean, the top four, though, could have been uh, very much up for grabs for them had they made this move in the summer. And we know that he turned them down in the summer, Darren. It, it, it didn't happen then. Four months on, it's only four months. What's changed? Why would he want it now? I'm guessing that obviously they must have assured him a bucket full of money first. <laughs> and it's like, it's a lot of money when you're sitting at over four months. <laughs> Honestly, they must have offered him a lot of money and there must have been assurances, certainly this time oh. around, that he wasn't given in the summer. I mean, of course, we know how quite tight the purse strings are down at Tottenham, but listen, if you're going to get a manager like Antonio Conte, you've kind of got to relinquish a little bit the, the, the power in terms of you've got to let him do what he does because we've seen that when you do that, the results, look at what he did at Chelsea, look at the way he turned around into Milan as well. So I think... Well, as what Merce was saying there, it was that they couldn't wait. Because of Manchester United's form, they probably couldn't believe their luck that Conte was still there. And it, it just seems to be, it does seem a little bit drastic in terms of, you look where Nuno was at the start of the season, three games in, wins manager in a month. Mm. We've only played ten games and he's already out of a job. It's, it's scary, but I, I, would he have been out of the job if, if Conte was available? I'm not quite sure. I don't think he would have pulled the trigger as quick. But the fact that you've got a, one of the, the best in the world, I put him in the top five managers in the world, elite managers, the fact that he's there f on a free, no club, I think they had to act now, and after the performance against Manchester United, that, that just simply wasn't good enough for a Spurs side. Jules, I, I actually think if you go back to the start of the season where Spurs were looking for managers, I mean, there was lots of names that were branded around, wasn't there? No one wanted the job, and I think what stood out a million miles was Harry Kane mm. didn't know where he, whether he was going to be there, where he wasn't going to be. So I think that was a big decision for Conte then, really. When you think to yourself, you take Harry Kane out of the equation, start of the season... Where are you going? Who can you bring in to supply the goals? We, we know he hasn't done that so far, but he would be a big, well, a big card in, in, in the decks for me, for him to come in. And, and I think that's why he didn't actually come in back then. And obviously, they landed Nuno. Yeah, but you think he's, he's took the job now, three months into the season. If you'd have took it at the start of the season, he was up against it to get in the top four. He was up against it. Yeah. Now he's taken a job where... They have a chance of getting in the top four with him there and he gets in and gets Harry Kane scoring. And he, he's done an unbelievable job. I mean, it, it, there's chances. There is. I mean, I just think, and I don't want to sound disrespectful here, as long as Solskjaer is manager at Man United, everybody else has a chance, in my opinion. Of getting in the top Do you know, four. It's almost taking the heat off of Solskjaer a little bit. And no, not even Solskjaer, because it's a little bit unfair. The Manchester United board, because now they don't yeah. have to do anything. Because yeah. if, if Conte's still there, the longer Conte's still there and the mm. results ain't going great, the performances are not great, there's always that, well, Conte's sitting right there, go and get him. But the fact that he's now the last kind of elite manager that's off the table, all of a sudden they can go, well, we can't just sack him because where do we go from there? There's, there's, mm. there's no other managers to go to. So if anything, it's, it's bought Oli a little bit more time. Mm. I mean, we'll talk more about Kane and what he might do with Kane in just a moment. But, you know, you think Conte, here's a guy who, who deals, Glenn, in league titles. Chelsea, Juventus, many of them, Inter. But this is an 18-month contract. Yeah. 
is he going to turn Spurs into title contenders in 18 months? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think he's a magician. Um, <laughs> you know, he's got, he's got his work cut out for sure. Um, but, you know, I believe he could be the right man for the job. Um, I think he's going to be the sort of manager that's going to burst through the door, you know, put his, you know, put his flag in the ground and just make a few people stand up. Um, I think he's going to ruffle some feathers. Um, he's going to probably babysit a lot of them in terms of, you know, when X happens, this is what you do. And he'll probably walk them through some very boring, you know, training sessions to, just to get their attention to begin with. Um, but I think once he gets them playing, because for me, they've got a few good, you know, they've got some decent players. They should be performing a lot better than they are. So I think if he can get them playing, then I think they will certainly close the gap. But at the moment, they're, they're miles off it. George, you've got, you, I mean, you've got to say as well, when Nuno came in, he came in with that accreditation, accreditation from Wolves, didn't he? Well, he built that Wolves side. So, I mean, the thing is, he's come into that Spurs change room. No disrespect, I'm not saying he couldn't manage bigger players, but Wolves in comparison to Spurs, it's, it's a bigger job. The expectations are there. And I, I feel for Nuno, I really do, because I I he did a fabulous job at Wolves. I thought as soon as he went in there, he was on a hiding tonight. The fans were on his back. People were saying he's not the right man for the job. Straight away, he was re he was there to be shot down. He got off to a great start, three three wins on the trot, but they were still poor. They, they they've got no identity whatsoever, and that's every time I've watched Spurs this season, they've looked to bang mid mid road table, and I just think that they need someone who's going to give them a, a bit of a. A, a revitalise, a bit of a spark. And I've, I think Conte will do that. I think you've just said that he, he'll come in, he'll stamp his authority down. He's a well-known manager. He's, you know, he's got the accreditations to back it up. I think that he will make it... I'm not saying he'll go and put him in the top four, but I do think he'll push him back up towards the league and I think he'll get response out of the so-called bigger players like Kane, Son, uh, who, who they need. Do, do you know what, as well? I think Nuno did have his identity for one game and that was Manchester City. I think that's the only time you saw yeah, it where first. he wants to play that kind of counter-attacking football. Yeah. But at the moment, he wasn't forced to bring back Kane, but of course, when you've got one of the best strikers in the world available, you've got to put him back in the team. But I think Nuno wanted to play that way against Manchester City where you sit back, pragmatic like he did at Wolves, yeah. when he got the pace of Son, Burkvine, Mora, just sitting back in there and kicking teams on a counter-attack. The moment kind of Harry Kane came back, he couldn't play that way because, obviously, unfortunately, Harry Kane can't play that way. So, as Lee was saying there, he was on a hide to nothing after that. Mm. I mean, Nuno couldn't get the best out of Kane this season and Conte will hope to do that. But if we look at the figures, I mean, the drop-off from Kane at the start of, of last season, the figures on the left here, to Kane at the start of this season, first nine Premier League appearances, seven goals in nine starts last season, uh, 140 minutes per goal, 38 shots, nine assists. And look at the figures on the right, eight starts, one goal, 738 minutes per goal and the one assist. Um, Merce, Conte said in the summer, if Kane was his player, he'd just make sure he stayed in the box, not keep trying to do everybody else's work and dropping deep. Is it as simple as that for Kane? Any centre-forward in the world, don't matter if you're the best player in the world, you, 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 you rely on service. You're only as good as the players that provide you. I, you know, I don't care who you are. If, if Thierry Henry come and played for my Walsall team, he wouldn't get 40 gold. <laughs> he just wouldn't. You're That's sure, that. Sure. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he wouldn't. You. But he wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you know, he's got the players he's got behind him. This is no disrespect in Skip, uh, Holberg, uh, Celso. They're not. They're not put the ball through the eye of a needle. They're holding midfield players. They're not going to put the ball through the eye of a needle for you. You know, they're not. They're not like... Ericsson. They're not Christian Eriksson. They're not Christian Eriksson, do you know what I mean? They're not Eric... You know, they're not... Berg, you know, Henri, for how great he was, he had Burkamp behind him, he had Perez behind him, Vieira, Petit. They could put balls through the eye of a needle when it wasn't even on. You know, I know you've got to finish him, but, you know, I, I, I understand where Harry Kane's coming from. He's dropping off. He doesn't trust the players that are playing in midfield. I'm sorry, he doesn't. And he's not getting a service. It's all right to say stay getting in the box, but they've got to get up the pitch first. You know, that's... That's pretty hard to do what they've done in the last one and a half so games is not have a shot on target. That's it's near on impossible. It's unbelievable. It's it near is. on impossible. If you said to someone, I want you to do the next one and a half games, I don't care who you're playing against, have no shot on target, you find that very difficult. But it's like it's like uh, Calvert Luna at Everton. When Ancelotti came in there, he wanted him to play through the lines of the box, through the six yard, eighteen yard box. Mm. Stop going out wide, you, you you're nothing to us. But, as Mer said, he had the service that he was getting provided with. So, it's all right saying, 
I'll make Kane score them goals. But you've got to change the dimension of, of how Spurs are going to play. And that's him through the middle. If he wants him predominantly to stay through the middle, because we do know Harry Kane likes oh. to drop off. We sit, I mean, <laughs> let's not forget last season, how many, he was a top assist in the Premier well, top League. Top assist, top goal scorer. A top goal year, scorer. Everybody's so he's capable right. of now doing everybody's it. everybody's saying getting the ball. Well, that's what I mean. Of... Because yeah. Spurs are not doing what, yeah. they, what they should be doing. And Harry Kane's got one goal this season, which... I think that's his twin brother's stats, to be honest, Jules. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think, I think Deli Ali has a chance. If yeah. Deli Ali gets back to doing what Deli Ali can do and what he's best at, is get making runs and getting in the box. And but how long have you been saying that, Merce? Now, uh, well, but you hope the penny drops with the lad. You know, I, it might be one of them lads who needs his arm put round him and say, right, you know, I need you in the team. If I, if I was a manager, that's what I would be saying. I, I'd put my arm round him and say, I need you in the team. You, you know, you were playing for England. You were one of the first choices for England before. I'm not saying it's his fault that they're not doing what they're doing, but this kid's career is just going to just fade away. Where would you go after Tottenham? But Merce, you're not going it, it, to Man United, Liverpool, Man City, or yeah, Chelsea. Yeah. You know, after that, you're drifting bottom half. And he, he, this kid can play. The hardest thing in the world is to run from midfield and score goals. Yeah. How many of them are there about? It's been Frank Lampard, David Platt, and I, I can't think of too many off the top of my head who can do that job, and he can. And he, at the moment, he's coming short and he's a bit like Harry Kane. He's trying to get on the ball and spray it around. But do you not think Nuno tried to do that with him? Because he oh. did actually get him in the side. He got he? him in the and, side, and but I never, I didn't, I never see him run yeah. beyond once. I no, never, I didn't. I, I didn't see, see the same. Run. So you well. know, I go back to off the top of my head, at Everton away when it, when the ball comes over, he volleys it in. Oh, yeah. He was he was unplayable. Mm. To be fair, Marina, you know, no one likes we yeah. play we're playing the game. No one likes chasing. Glenn played at the back. No one likes chasing anybody back who hasn't got the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the last thing you want to do: run with someone who ain't got the ball. But you have to go with them. And he just constantly kept on going, and he can finish. He's yeah. an unbelievable finisher for a midfield player. I think Mourinho got it out of him when he first came yeah. first, didn't he? Where he, had to, he scored that goal against United, where it was unbelievable touch over his head. Mm. So I think Mourinho at first put his arm around him, and I think Delhi started to get, he started to get the best the old Delhi Ali back. Mm. But again, it started to fade away, fade away. But maybe Conte needs to go in there. And when you start looking, as Mercer was saying, at the midfielders they've got Skip, he's a holder, yeah. Hoiberg. You need a bit of creativity in there from somewhere, and Deli Ali can do that. So if you can get him onside, that's half the battle because the connection him and Harry Kane had a couple mm. of seasons back was unbelievable. Yeah. Like, he, Harry Kane would drop in, and Deli Ali would in yeah. behind all the time. Even the goal against Chelsea was it, where he scored two at the bridge, mm. where it goes over, brings it down, finishes yeah. it off. If somehow Conte can get them two in tune, and then with Son, Lucas Moura, that that kind of front four. They will win you games. Mm. And all we've got to do now is worry about the, the holding midfielders yeah. behind. Yeah, but you have got the likes of Endombele as well. Yeah. Who's, who's capable of doing that role and playing in that role. But it's, it's not consistent enough. And that's where they are, they are coming... They're falling short. That's why yeah. Kane's not in double figures already, which we know at this stage of the season, he's got... Mm. Double assists and, and double goals, so it, and it's not happening. So there's got to be something that's got to change at Spurs. And I think I'm, I agree with the guys. I think he's got to go in there and utilise the whole squad, get everyone together, and try and get the best out of the players that have almost been fringe players. I mean, there is, sorry, I think the thing is as well, some of it needs to be looked at for Delhi as well. You know, because yeah. the, it's not down for the manager to just go and you know make a player start playing out of nothing. The player needs to demand something from himself in the fact that. Yeah. If I'm Deli Alley and I'm watching these midfielders play in front of me every week, yeah. I'll, you know, I won't be able to sleep. Yeah. You know, so then that would be down for me to do something in training to make the manager have to pick me. Mm. You know, it's, not for a, it's not for me to wait for a manager to get sacked, hope the new guy plays me. Mm -hmm. You need to do something about it today. Yeah. Just a final brief thought. Um, Daniel Levy went for, for Mourinho. That didn't work. After Pochettino went, he went for Nuno. That didn't work. He's got Paritici in place now, and now he's got his man Conte. Mercy, is this a final throw of the dice now for, for Levy? No, Daniel Levy will be there as long as he wants to be there. I mean, he's never... You know, you, you, you've got to think where Tottenham were. I mean, it weren't too long ago we were thinking they could win the league. They're in a Champions League final. You know, they, they, they were playing in the best stadium in the world, if not one of the best stadiums in the world. His club's moved on. It has. I mean, yeah, he... He, he's not let that, down, that club down. I don't think he's let them down hardly ever, if I'm being honest. And I, I don't think so. I, I, don't, I think the managers come in. It's a no-brainer. Conte's a no-brainer. Mm. You know, Pochettino's a no-brainer. You know, I just think sometimes you just got to be careful what you wish for. The, 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 the Pochettino one, that was the one I think that hurt them. You got, you know, man, players lose form, like Harry Kane has. So do managers. Yeah. Managers, you get to a stage when you're a manager where I've been there where you're like, I, we're, we're going to win again. And you lose that confidence. And, that, and that's what happens with managers as well. 
Uh, Conte definitely a winner uh, in his career. He met the players earlier. He's waiting for his working visa now. Could be in charge for the, the Vitesse game on Thursday in Europe. Will definitely be in charge for the weekend trip to Goodison Park. New manager bounce. Maybe against Everton. We shall wait and see.